everything about Josephine Alcar, who her parents were, and the town of Alcar. Can you tell me anything about that? Well, uh, let's see. Josephine Meyer Allgaier, and her mother was Carolyn Meyer and Frederick Meyer, and they owned the farm up on the hill, and they had uh, the milk company. Okay. okay. Did they have any children? Who's, who, what okay, children? yes, they had, uh, Elmer was the oldest, that's her brother that runs okay. the milk farm now. And then there was Verge, who is married to Nelson, that runs the drugstore now, okay, or did sure. then. Right. And then there was Mother; she was the tail end. The three of them. Okay. Now, growing up in Valmire, it was during the '30s and the '40s, World War II, uh, right after the Depression. Can you think of any childhood pastimes that you had, and who you? who your partners were and having this kind of fun mm -hmm. in any of the pastimes growing up in Well, most of the pastime I really did with Ross, which you've interviewed before. Okay. And um, my pastime, uh, I had a, not, a lot with Nelson, <laughs> who was the pharmacist. Yeah. And uh, he'd come by in his pickup truck and say, let's go to the farm, Yvonne. And he, there was only one seat. So he took a slop bucket and turned it upside down. He said, here's your seat, hang on tight. And away we went, you know. And we planted uh, dug potatoes. We picked cherries, apples. Um, we dug worms so we could go fishing. They had horses so we could go horseback riding. So uh, to me, it was a fun day when he came and got me. Yeah. Can you? Do you have any memories of uh, homecoming or parades or ch church picnics? Anything come to mind when you think of Valmire and homecoming? Well, I liked the bands when they would come, and Valmire band would be in that, you know. And um, but I was always warned that I had to stay close to home because these strange men would come to town to put up the Ferris wheels. And so I had to be very careful where I went by myself, you know, so that was one of them. And see, what else? Um, not too many church picnics, but uh, I en enjoyed the uh, all our family reunions down at Prairie du Rocher, and they all got together, had a picnic, played ball, and just, uh, I saw all my cousins, I think I had 17 of them, because see, the Allgars were a Catholic family, where the Myers were Protestant, so we, we produced a lot of cousins on the one side, where we only had two on the other. So, uh, but I enjoyed seeing my cousins, but sometimes I didn't see that often. Yeah. And Ross always missed being there because he wasn't one of the, quote, old guys. <laughs> Can you think of any teachers that, any memories of teachers from Valmire? Anything come to mind as far as teachers? Well, I had two of them that were my aunts, which was unusual. Now, who were they? Okay. Uh, Howard's wife, Leona, was a teacher, yeah. And then Bert next door, that was Carol Fay's mother, she was a teacher. And so they were, you know, two of my favorites. They were not only teachers, but your neighbors. They were my neighbors and my relatives. Uh, memories maybe Ross playing basketball. Of, of the, the what? Ross playing basketball. Of the school or the yeah, store? The school. The school. So we'll start with the school. Okay, start with the school. Um, I enjoyed being in band with him because he was a good saxophone player. Um, he really hit his stride in basketball that junior and senior year. So the senior year, I wasn't there. But they went to the finals that year, which was very interesting. And so his uncle that lived in St. Louis would pick me up at Deaconess Hospital and take me to the game so I could see Ross play. and. Uh, so I'd holler, Snyder, get that ball off that rim and in that basket. And I could see him smile so he knew I was there, you know, because I really yelled at him. <laughs> Tell me any memories you would have of the Valmouth floods. If, well, they you were, were yeah. Nine or ten, right? Yeah, ten, eleven. Yeah, it was 41, 42, and 43. Is that when the floods were? Yeah. 
Well, that's an exciting time for that age child, you know. And so I remember Ross and I would go out in the backyard when the flood, you know, the levee would break and we'd put rocks out there to stop the flood from coming, you know. We were gonna stop this water. And we also found some baby rabbits that were hiding and we brought them in and tried to raise them, but it, it didn't work. Uh, what was exciting is that the Coast Guard came to town, all these young guys. And we'd sit on the front porch, Susie, Fifi and I at the church and watch all these guys go by and they'd stop and talk to us. And I know one time they said, hey, have any of you girls got any older sisters? And Fifi says, I do. Well, she was six months older than me, the sister, you know, so that didn't work out. And then the other time is that Daddy built the house up on a hill and that's what really kept the water from going into our house on the floors. But when the Coast Guard would come, they'd hit that, they'd hit that terrace, and they'd get out on this side, which was only about this deep water, and the guys say, all right, you can get out. Well, they'd get out on the other side, and all you could see was their hat floating down the river, you know, and they'd come up and say, yeah, sure, 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 you know. So, you know, they were fun for a 13-year-old, 12-year-old, you know, it wasn't that bad. Had to sleep upstairs in the attic, and uh, Daddy fished in the front yard, and uh, so, you know, it wasn't, uh, they rowboated from the drugstore over to our house, and so, to me, it wasn't a hard time. It was like a fun time. Yeah, no school. <laughs> Did you, your dad worked at the quarry? Yes. And can you describe the different jobs that he had in the quarry? I know that he had the, the dinky, but he also had the uh, big steam shovel. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can remember him talking about uh, loading the trucks up, and the, the drivers would fall asleep, and then he'd take that thing and hit them on the top of the thing to wake them up, but to tell them that he was finished loading them. You yeah. know, I remember that. I remember uh, the shovel that was later on when the boys would, you, you boys would go out there with him and. And they said, man, we love that shovel. It's got a restroom on it, and it's got a, <laughs> a toilet on it and everything, you know. <laughs> and I thought, I don't remember that, you know. But anyway, they really enjoyed it. I think they enjoyed it more than I would, I did, you know. But Did you ever get to ride on the dinky yourself? Did you no. ride on it? I don't remember riding on it, no. But your grandkids did. My, my kids did, yeah, right. Talk about some of the businesses, maybe the Schneider's Drugstore, what it means to you, some memories of yeah. the oh, Snyder's Drugstore. I love the Snyder's Drugstore. That was my home from home. Those green curtains, remember going in there and the green curtains yeah. flying, you know? Yeah. Ice cream, all you wanted. And when mother would go to St. Louis shopping, then I could go to the drugstore that time and I'd have hamburger and chili and ice cream, you know, for my dinner at school after, you know, at school time. and. Um, I do remember during the flood, I was sitting on the bar and a picture floated out from between the bars and it was my school picture. And I thought that was very unique. And then they, you know, then they added on and they added on the jute box and they added on the booths, which was really made a place where all the kids would hang out after basketball games and everything. So it was a real, and they had the first television in town. So everybody would come in and watch that. And, uh, you know, it was the hub of our little city, really. It was the hub. And I loved it because, you know, he was not only the coroner, he was the druggist. Uh, he did the floats. He was very artistic and uh, played in a band. This is all my uncle. And uh, drug me everywhere that Ross went. Did you ever remember climbing the bluffs? Did you ever yes. do that? I got to do that, but the, the thing that I remember the most is that I went horseback riding on the bluffs, and I was on the back of Nelson's horse. Ross had a horse, and he had a horse, and he said, Gal, he always called me Gal, Gal, come on, you're going to the hills today, but you'll ride in back of me, and I still remember hanging on to him and going to the top of those hills, so that, that was a fun, a fun day. Did you ever fish at that lake? There? Yes. Got I got the fish there, got the swim there. Yeah, yeah. They took me, 
when Ross would go to the uh, basketball games, I got to go. When he went to the Cardinal games, I got to go. When he went to the wrestling, I got to go. And uh, to the circus, like I told us, telling you last night, I was thinking about that circus. And I remember, you know, when you take a 10-year-old into a big circus arena, it's, it's humongous to a little country girl. And I remember I had to go to the bathroom. And they said, look, it's right up there. You just go right up there and we'll watch you and then you come back down. So I was felt safe. But as I came down the steps, I looked and I could see more there. And then I thought, well, I better look over here. And when I looked over that way, I looked directly in an elephant's eye. They were bringing the big elephant in for performance. And they have the tiniest eye for this big, humongous beast that it was. And on top of it was their trainer with long golden hair and turquoise and rhinestone, you know. And I looked at him, and he, he had that switch in his hand, you know, oh, to the elephant, and away you go, you know. But he looked at me, and he just hit the top of his head with his hat with the switch and waved at me. <laughs> and I thought, oh, that's so important. <laughs> And I've always, you know, I think his son does it now, but for a little girl in Valmar, that was a treat. It's a good, good yeah. deal. Yeah. Did you ever get to go to any Cardinal games, any yes. baseball games? Yes. Uh, my Uncle, Uncle Earl. Those, yeah, right? and, and my Uncle Earl on Daddy's side. See, Daddy had seven brothers. And so yeah. I got entangled in their routines, too. What brothers lived in Valmar? What, what uh, Earl. Earl. Okay, uh, Bud did for some time, you know, and then Dutch did. Who else? And then Clifford and Cletus lived in St. Louis. And then they had one daughter, and she lived in Dupo for a long time. And then she transferred to, to Pine Bluff, Arkansas, because he was with the railroad. Yeah, okay. Spent lots of Christmases in Valmar. Yeah. Can you talk about any Christmases uh, that come to mind? Um, well, we also Thanksgiving, but and Christmas. Uh, when I was a little girl, I had a favorite horse that lived right down the street from me. And so I fed him every day after school. And his name was Champion. And I never did get to ride him, but uh, it was Thanksgiving out at the farm. And all of a sudden I heard jingle bells jingle, 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 and I looked out there, and the owner of it had saddled up the horse, put bells on it, and came out to the farm to give me a ride really? with Champion. And so I always tell that to my grandchildren. You know, I really did have jingle bells, you know. <laughs> I know the song. <laughs> so it was something I'll never forget, that he, he took the time to do it, because it was snow, and he had to go across the fields. He couldn't come up the road. And it, uh, and it was really neat, yeah. And then Nelson was Santa Claus most of the time, yeah. Yeah, yeah, at the suit and everything. Would come in with ice cream and <laughs> he was my main character in my life, I think. Yeah, yeah. It was the little white house by the railroad track. They had a swing on their front porch. I lived there five years. Um, I was born on a kitchen table because Mother Fred, I, they bring the wrong baby home, so I was born at home. There was no running water. There was an outhouse. There was electricity, but I lived there for five years. Uh, and I waved at every engineer that went by because the trains were right next to the house. And, and one day, uh, Mother looked at in the backyard and this strange guy's holding me in the front yard and she went out there and she said, I'd like to know what, why you're holding my child. She was really mad. And uh, he said, well, I'm the engineer that waves at your, this little girl every day. And he said, and I said to her, well, mommy, don't you know her? Uh, don't you know him? That's the engineer. That's my friend, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so he put me down and, and walked away. But that was my thing with the engineers that I had. And then, at that time, Nelson was coroner. And when there was the train wreck, what happened is the boilers exploded. 
on the trains. And so when that happened, he had to go in and he said, those men were literally, you could pick the meat off of them, they were scalded to death, you know. And so I remember that terrible train wreck. And, and it was real close to the house. It was between here and the railroad crossing that it happened, you know. And so that was something. And then, of course, later on, this is later on, but when we were transferred to Little Rock, I rode the train up to Valmire, got off there, which was interesting. Daddy put me on that, and it was like old um, purple corduroy, you know, or velvet seats. And um, that was a night train coming in up through Poplar Bluff and Prairie to Grove and going up there and stopped at Valmar to let me off the train, which was, but you know, none, none of you kids would look at me. They all just said, choo choo, choo choo, choo choo, choo choo. <laughs> Heck with you, Mom, I'm looking at the train, you know. <laughs> but that, that was interesting to, uh, to have done that, to ride that train that time. When, when Mother and Daddy got married, the rule was a Catholic could not marry a Protestant in a church. And so there was a difference between the two. And so my mother and father had to be married by the peace, the justice of peace, right? And so they got married by the justice of peace. So there was always, you know, and you got this big Algar Catholic bunch, and then you got this little tiny Protestant bunch over here. And uh, Verge Cat had come over, and that's Nelson's wife, had come over to pick up Rick to take him over to the drugstore. And as he was walking down the street, which is the Catholic Church here, our house is here, and the Protestant Church is here. So he was walking between the two. And he said, Cocky, he said, you see that house over there? That church is for the birds. And oh, she said, oh my goodness. What has he found taught this child, you know? <laughs> this church is for the birds. And he, he almost started to cry because he said, well, my mama said that church is for the birds, and, 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 and I just don't know what to think. And um, so time she got to the drugstore, I explained what he meant to her. I said, Cocky, when we walk to your house, there's, if you look up there, there's two birdhouses. One's a regular house, but the other one's a church. And I said, isn't it nice that there's a church there for the birds? And so, I'm, but I'm pointing to this church, you know. And you should never say another church is for the birds and lectured him all the way to the store till he was green, you know. And finally, when I got over there, he was just crying. I thought, oh, what happened? So she told me the story. I said, Cocky, if you go back there and look, there is a church there for the birds. And it's right there to the hot, by the house. And when he was saying that church, I said, I walked with him the other day, and I said, isn't that nice that the Lord provided a church for the birds right here between these two churches, you know? And then she understood. Then she had to apologize. And then she almost cried. And oh, it, it, but it, it, I think I told that at her funeral. <laughs> and everybody laughed. There's a lot of Catholics there. I hope they laughed, you know, because I really didn't mean it was for the birds, you know? But that, that was something fun. And she really wanted Rick to be right, you know. Another thing Rick did, uh, he packed his suitcase to go back to uh, Arkansas, and I went through it, and there was a train car in it. <laughs> I didn't know that thing. And I said, uh, where'd you get this train car? I said, did you steal this train's car from Ross's train set up in the attic? I said, you know what you have to do, don't you? I said, oh, get your hind in over there. Well, I quick called Birds to tell her what had happened. I said, you better back me up on this because that's stealing and he does not need to know he can get by with it. So he went over there and he gave the train back and she went right along with it. <laughs> Poor cocky, she had to really back. She had some things to go through with Rick. <laughs> but he went back, took the train back, and it's probably still there today. Yeah, so. Some good times. <laughs> when I, I was little, I got a, a Cocker Spaniel dog. And uh, 
Ross and Ross and getting them kept it for about a week before they brought it over for my birthday. And he just cried when he had to give up that dog. And his mother said, well, don't you love Yvonne? And he said, yeah, I do, but I love me better. <laughs> so, but I got the dogs. We bred them, and I ended up having two dogs. And Daddy used them for hunting. They were duck hunting dogs. And uh, the strange thing about those dogs was they never went out of the yard. Now, how they knew there was no such thing as electric fences, but they stayed at the edge of the yard. And I would sit there with them, and I would see my daddy walk home from the quarry every day. And I'd see him come around that corner, and almost like Patsy Cline's, you know, <laughs> that movie, come around that corner with his bib overalls, that hat, and that bucket under his arm, you know. And he'd whistle to those dogs, and man, they go right to him. And that's when we all three knew we could go and meet him out down the road, you know, in front of the, it was by the Catholic Church. And that was always a thrill to me to see, see him come around that corner. He usually stopped at his mother's house, which lived in the alley part, and she would bake him cookies and stuff, and, and he'd have a treat with her, and then he'd come on home. But uh, that was his mom? That was his mom, yeah. So that, that was a happy time. I still, uh, I remember in that movie where she visions her father coming back from those coal mountains. Patsy yeah. Cline, do you remember that? Yeah. All when he's there and all of a sudden he's gone, remember he has a heart attack and dies. Uh, but he's dressed the same way as my daddy. Those big overalls, remember? That hat and that lunchbox on his arm, you know, JBA, you know. Did mm -hmm. he ever ride to work or would he always just walk? Well, you know, road? After they told him he was borderline diabetic, that he should stop drinking that sugar water, iced tea, and that he should walk to work every day, walk two miles every day. Well, that's what he did. He walked two miles every day to work. He stopped drinking sugar in his tea, and he never got diabetes. So that's how he beat that. So, uh, but uh, other than that, you know, he just didn't have any health issues. I don't think he ever was in the hospital until he was 80 years old. Yeah, he was a healthy man. Oh, I know what I want to tell one more story. Oh, go ahead. Um, when Earl came home from the Army, he needed he didn't have a car, so my daddy said, well, you can have my car for the, the evening. Well, he wrecked it. And uh, he needed a new fender. And you just didn't get new fenders during the war or after a while, yeah. for a while. So my daddy rode around in a 50, what, 50, uh, 40, uh, 40. a 40-something Chevy, and you know, with that fender off. And I was just learning to drive. And so um, one day there was a real downpouring of rain. And so I thought, that is really fun going through that mud puddle because there's no fender on this and the rain, will, the water will go right over the top of the car, you know just soaking wet. Roll up your windows. Come on, let's do it again. I don't know how many times I did it. And all of a sudden, Daddy's phone rings and said, Ah, Joe, um, in case you're having trouble with your car, I want you to know that Yvonne has gone by my house that's got the pond in front of it and has completely drained it. And so I think they're pushing the car home. <laughs> So he looks out the door, and there's all my friends pushing the car. 46 Chevy was what it was, pushing my, the car home, and Daddy looked at it, and water was just running off. Didn't say a word to me. He said, push it in the basement. He said, push it in the basement. He said, just let it sit, and went in the house. Now, that's my daddy. You know, that is a perfect example of my daddy. And he said, uh, I think it'll dry out. And... Uh, he said, uh, then when I got in the house and everybody was gone, he said, would you mind telling me how the water got all over the car? <laughs> it's best to tell your father the truth. And I said, yeah, I drained a bud, mud, big mud hole in front of Dutch's house. Oh, you did. Did you have any idea what that would do to my car? I said, no, I just thought it was fun. He said, well, you drowned it out the motor is what you did. And he said, I will let it down there till it stops dripping. 
and then I'll start it up and take it out. But I don't want to ever see you do that again. You know, that was the end of that. <laughs> I'm gonna cry thinking about it. <laughs> I sure had fun doing it. <laughs> Ooh, that water, and it was dirty. Oh. So that was the end of my driving for a while. Can you think who was in the car with you? Oh, I have no idea. Four or five, probably. <laughs> Just having the best time. Was Pat, uh, Patsy in? That's yeah, probably my girlfriends that were with me. Yeah. yeah, I don't think any boys were with me. Yeah, Patsy. Patsy and, and uh, Marilyn and Marianne yeah, and, baby. yeah. And, uh, because, see, we girls back there didn't drive. I mean, the, you know, I didn't drive till I had two children and had a car. Back then, now everyone has a car. My mother never had a car, you know. Now my mother-in-law had a car. She had a, what, what kind of con Oldsmobile convertible? Or was it? Yeah. yeah. She had a car because, see, Dad would take the car to work, so she needed a car. But my daddy walked to work. My, we didn't need a car. See, so back then, the only way I ever got the Shamrock was where we all hung out is that we started dating older boys that were four years older than us, and they had cars. And that's how we got rides to the Shamrock. I never, my father never let me take my the car to Shamrock. That would be his car. It'd be his car, no. And I wouldn't dare ask him. Yeah. It was, I know Marilyn did one time. Her dad let her one time. Usually the guys had the cars, and then we get a ride. So, I mean, it was a different time, a different era. Can you imagine your 16-year-old not having a car, and your 18-year-old, and your 19-year-old, and your 20-year-old? Yeah, now it's unheard. Oh, we gotta get a car. <laughs> <laughs> Things have changed. The thing I remember that I really did with my father was lay on the floor, listen to the ball, listen to the Cardinal games with Harry Carey. Harry Carey. Harry I could be. It could be. It is. Oh, run you. So that was my, uh, I did everything else like with Nelson. But Daddy was raised with all these boys and one girl. and But he did teach me baseball. But he knew I would never be a baseball player because I stopped the ball with my foot. <laughs> he gave up hope on me. I was not athletic. Not did at you all. play in the band? Yes, trombone. You played the trombone? Mm -hmm. I didn't you didn't know that? I didn't know that. Front rows got the step and all the harsh stuff in front of the braids. And really? Yeah. I was a good trombone player. Ross mentioned that maybe two kids in my whole school were not in the band. Yeah. That's how popular Yes. It was. Well, yeah. And I was in all the plays. We were in the place. Mm -hmm. yeah. We were in drama in the band. Band, yeah. And then we had sewing machines. We made, we made most of our clothes because there were no, there was no pennies. There was no Sears. There was no Walmart. There was a catalog. And that came later. So, yeah, it was a different time, wasn't it? When you really look at it, it was a different time. I didn't realize you were the first 17 years you spent there. And then once you left, you never went back, or you know, moved back. I guess you went off to nursing school. See, I moved to St. Louis, and all of a sudden, I was in the big city. And I uh, then I married your daddy, and I was in Belleville. So I, I'd never moved back to. I mean, we went there. Sure. We had 25 Christmases there, and 25, you know. Yeah. And uh, but uh, but other than that, I never moved back at home again, you know. Uh, sometimes if I had a baby, I might have been there for a week or something, you know, but other than that, so. that was it. Because, see, I was so young when I graduated from high school. I was 17. Yeah, I was 17. Because, see, back then you start school when you're five. And I was born in October, and the cutoff date was November 1st, so I just missed it, you know, so I was young. <laughs>